I have been developing a 2D graphics engine in Python, inspired by Javit X9 YouTube series. But I was encountering some problems implementing perspective correct texture mapping. The problem is that I was using a very precarious projection method, which I had invented myself, and it didn't work very well. So I implemented a new projection method, closer to the standard, but without matrices. And finally the texture mapping is working fine. And, to better test my engine, I updated the wavefront files loading function, those obj files. Now I can import meshes with or without textures and with the function to transform quads into triangles, so I have a good compatibility with obj files available on the internet. I will start talking about rendering triangles with perspective, since they are the basic element of most 3D engines. In the last video I had implemented a fine texturing, which is just a texture distortion to conform to the triangle shape in a linear way. Just to recap, I render a triangle from top to bottom, identifying the vertical order of the points projected on the screen. After that I calculate the slope of the lines that connect the points to do the linear interpolation and find the x values that are inside the triangle, interpolating again in the horizontal line that connects the two x values. So in the same way I was interpolating textures, calculating slopes and doing the linear interpolation. But as the result we have some distortions in the 2D objects. It looks similar to the PlayStation 1 graphics. That happens because the texture isn't considering the depth of the vertices of the triangle, that is the Z values in relation to the camera. So we need to interpolate the Z values, but not in the linear way as we do with the X values. We have to remember that with perspective, objects that are closer to the camera appear larger than objects that are further away. The same goes for the regions on the textures. The parts that are closer will appear larger than the ones that are more distant. So in a similar way as we do in ray casting, to consider the perspective we need to use the inverse of the depth to do the interpolations. In fact, that's how the vertices are projected, which I will show later. So I can interpolate linearly the inverse of Z, but in the end I need to undo this inversion to get back the correct depth value. And for textures I need to do the same thing. I will divide the texture coordinates UV values by Z, or better, multiply by the inverse of Z, before doing the linear interpolation as usual. In the end I just need to multiply by the recovered value of Z to bring it back to the original UV range. And so we can clearly see the difference between texture mapping with perspective and affine mapping without perspective. I added simple shading here to indicate the points that are more distant to the camera. Well, back to the graphics engine, each triangle is defined by three vertices in 3D space. And with a set of triangles we define a mesh of the 2D object. Besides that, we have the camera, that moves almost freely in space, with the three XYZ coordinates and two rotations that define the camera direction, one for looking into the sides and the other to look up and down. Then we need to project the vertices into a plane, which is more or less in the camera's position and perpendicular to the direction of the camera, to know where the triangles should be rendered on the screen. On my old code I was trying to calculate the angles of each point in relation to the camera vector and comparing with the fields of view. It worked fine when there was no up and down camera tilt, but for greater tilts the objects got deformed, looking like pancakes. So in this new projection method I am following more closely what most rendering softwares do, pretending that the origin is in the camera's position and that the z-axis is aligned with its direction, like moving the world around a static camera. To do that, we need to subtract the camera position from the coordinates of each point and rotate them, first horizontally and then vertically according to the camera direction. The horizontal rotation is done around the vertical axis, where the new x-coordinate is defined by the x-coordinate multiplied by the cosine of the horizontal angle subtracting the z-coordinate multiplied by the sine. And the new z-coordinate is defined by the x-coordinate multiplied by the sine of the horizontal angle plus the z-coordinate multiplied by the cosine. The y-coordinate is not affected by the horizontal rotation. And the vertical rotation is done around the new x-axis. 
and it's basically the same thing, replacing the x coordinate by the y coordinate and using the sine and cosine of the vertical rotation. I know what you're thinking, this whole process could be done with a matrix multiplication, but this way it is much easier to understand and I think it wouldn't make much of a difference performance wise. After that we need to bring these values to the screen space, dividing the x and y values by the z values and multiplying by scale factors dependent on the field of view. Here we still add the values of half of the width and height of the screen to center the image. I chose to use an array with 6 values for each vertice, with the 3 original coordinates and the 3 projected coordinates. After projecting the vertices, we have to go through all the triangles and render them on the screen, which is basically the logic I presented earlier. There are just a few more things here. To filter the triangles that are too far off the screen and those that are facing the opposite direction of the screen, also known as backface culling, and the Z buffer check, where a pixel is only rendered if the new Z value is smaller than the stored value. And there is a second function to draw triangles here, which uses the same logic but without the texturing part, just with colors that depend on the coordinates of the points, for textureless models. But to render something interesting, we need cool 3D models. Here I used OBJ files, because that was the format that Javit X9 used. And in fact, it is really a very easy format to understand. When the model doesn't have textures, we only have lines with vertices, that start with the letter V, and lines with faces, that start with the letter F. Vertices are always three coordinates, X, Y and Z, separated by spaces. And faces are polygons that reference the vertices and can have three or more vertices separated by spaces. When a model has textures, the vertices continue with the same format, but the faces lines have texture data and possibly other parameters, which are grouped by vertices, separated by slashes. But it also has the texture coordinates, similar to the vertices, but the lines start with VT and are only two coordinates, U and V, that we are interested here. There are other variations with OBJ files, but with this you can already render some interesting things. And knowing how this structure works, it is not hard to decode an OBJ file, reading each line splitting the elements separated by spaces in a list. If the list is empty, we can skip this line. If the first element is V, we save the next three elements in the vertex list. If it is VG, we save the next two elements in the list of textured coordinates. If it is F and it is not textured, we save the next three elements in the list of triangles. And if this line has five elements, we will save one more triangle in the list, with the second element and the fourth and the fifth. But if the model is textured, we need to separate again each element in a list, now with the slash separator. So we can add the first elements of each point in the triangles list and the second elements in the texture mapping list. Here again the special case of splitting quads into triangles. At the end, I transform the vertex list in arrays of floats and the triangles and texture mapping lists in arrays of integers to return them to the main function. One thing that I found curious is that the vertical coordinate of the texture is upside down in the OBJ files. I spent some time trying to understand why my textures were coming out messy. Well, with this we can import most OBJ files from the internet. So we at least have a more or less competent 3D model viewer. Models can still have more advanced features like normal maps and transparencies and material definitions which I don't know yet if I will implement. There are still other things that I like to test before, like triangle clipping, skybox, shadows, effects, loading several models at the same time, making simple animations and maybe even making a game. So that's it for this video. If you have questions about any parts of the code, it is available on my GitHub. You can also watch the previous episodes of the series and feel free to ask in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.